coming up on the Tuesday show. It's simple, fairly quick. Literally just stick them on a tray, shove them in the oven for 20 minutes, and away you go. Well, I'm not opening a whole <laughs> can of beans just because you fancy some beans. Go screw yourself. You know, butter in my fridge. What am I going to do with it? You can butter things. <laughs> Heat it up right in front of them, and then start to slowly eat it in their face. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. Nearly made me choke on my nuts. <laughs> There's your intro. Welcome to the Tuesday Show with CJ and Ted. <laughs> Aww. My raisins are clumping together. <laughs> yeah, that can happen at mm. a certain age. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I went shopping again on Thursday. Mm. Uh, I was off work a few weeks ago. Deathly ill. Pretty sure it was COVID. Yeah. But all the tests came back negative, so officially I haven't had it. But of course, because I'm stuck at home, bored, nothing now, nothing better to do, I just ate all the food. Literally what I did was just eat all the food. Mm-hmm. But I had nothing. Yeah, literally. I think all I all I had left in my freezer when I went shopping on Thursday was uh, like three fish fingers in a box. And that was it. Everything else gone. Do you eat a lot of fish fingers? I quite like fish fingers, yeah. Yeah. Fish fingers in a wrap, bit of tomato ketchup, maybe some cheese if I'm feeling adventurous. Mm. Um, yeah, that's no, really good. It's nice. It's simple, fairly quick. Literally just stick them on a tray, shove them in the oven for 20 minutes, and away you go. Mm. Um yeah, quick and easy. Sometimes I didn't even bother with that. Um, with fish fingers, you can just oh, put just them in the just microwave. Oh, well, I thought you were going to say, I don't even bother cooking them, just shove them yeah, in. No, I, I don't have them go. raw or anything like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not an animal, Christ. <laughs> well, I'd say I don't, own, I don't own a microwave, and I don't really think I'd ever cook something purely in the microwave, unless it was like a, a microwave meal, like a ready meal mm. or something. Um, but then again, I've gone the last 25 years without a microwave. Mm. Pretty good without it, you know. Not 25 years, 15 years. What am I talking about? <laughs> Not 25 years, God. Yeah, uh, no, I've got literally since I moved out of my parents' house, I haven't had a microwave in my life. Apart from when, when I, I lived with my old housemate. Mm. But again, I didn't really use it. It was there for... Um, cause he, the baked beans that he bought were microwave pots of baked beans. So I'm always like, well, just grab a saucepan, chuck them in the saucepan, away you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, he used to buy the, uh, the microwave pots. So I think that's probably the only time, but given the choice, I wouldn't have bought those. And I, I didn't even know that existed. Mm. Yeah. How Something. lazy do you have to be? Or how committed do you have to be to baked beans that you would get a, a special type of baked bean container? Surely baked beans are the sort of thing that you buy because you think, I might need those. You buy them I in have, the tin because they'll last forever. I have one can of baked the, beans. Yeah. One can of baked beans that lives in my cupboard. Um, <laughs> they've been there since the day I moved in, and I haven't even considered opening them yet. Yeah. But anything... Usually, like if I make like a cottage pie, I'll throw in a can of baked beans yeah, just to kind of yeah. pack it out a little bit. Yeah. Um, but no, I haven't even done a cottage pie since I've lived here. Mm. Mainly because it's a lot of work, and I hate peeling potatoes. Absolutely I, hate I, it. I would not have beans with um, a breakfast. No. Um, my brother came around the other day to visit. Mm-hmm. Um, cause he hadn't seen my house and I, I said to him, you know, I'll, I'll make brunch. It's fine. Um, a couple of like breakfast wraps, you know, sausage, bacon, egg, a mm. uh, bit of cheese. Um, and he was like, uh, oh, can we get some beans with that? And I was like, no, <laughs> well, I'm not opening a whole can of beans just cause you fancy some beans. Yeah. Go screw yourself. You know, and I'll tell you, you what, there's a, te- there's a Tesco's just up the road and I'm sure, pretty sure they'll serve like the single the like quarter can or third size can of baked beans if you want yeah. some beans just for yourself. Yeah. I was like, I'm not opening a whole can of beans just for that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Yeah, I have been known to have beans on toast. Mm. But I I wouldn't I I don't know, I just wouldn't intentionally go out to add beans to a meal. Mm. 
I, I tend to, like I added, it's like cottage pie just to fill it out a little bit because meat mm. is quite expensive anyway. Um, and it just gives it a bit of something extra, you know. No, I, I, yeah. Pretty much all I use beans for. Even a chili, if you want to bulk it out. Mm. Yeah. I haven't made chili for a long time. Might have to make chili at some point. Mm. Maybe, maybe tomorrow night before we we'll go back to work. I don't know. There's probably going to be a takeaway. By the time we're finished here, it's probably going to be a takeaway I'm getting. <laughs> Look, it's eight o'clock at night, all right? Uh, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll need something and I'm not, I can't be bothered to cook at this time of night. You've got a tin of beans you could have. I do. I also have soup that I'm probably never going to use. <laughs> um, <laughs> what else have I got? Uh, that's about it. I think I'll use everything else. I, I've got I've got beans and I've got soup that I have moved around when I've moved. <laughs> the only time I touch the can of beans is when I take it out of the cupboard to get to something behind it. And then I put it back in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, I've got um yeah, tin of baked beans I don't use. I've got a couple of cans of soup which the problem is because I still have to stand over the stove to cook it or to warm it up. Yeah. And I can't be bothered. I feel mm. like the what I gain from spending that time and energy cooking it is not doesn't warrant the time and energy being put in. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think the the thing is with well, with soup I think soup is underrated. But it it's it's not the sort of thing that you think is worth the effort of making. No, it is. Although, sorry, go on. It, but it but it is worthwhile at the end of it. Yeah, maybe. I, I'm glad of it. And every time I have soup, I think, oh, do you know what? This is really nice. I should have soup more often. <laughs> and then a year later. I'll repeat the process and think, yep. oh, I like seeing. <laughs> yeah. I should have it more often. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I agree. What I need to do, actually, if I'm going to make soup, I, I need to go to a shop and buy bread rolls and butter. Mm. Of which, again, I don't really buy or I don't buy at all because mm. I don't use it. Mm. I don't eat bread. Um. I might make an exception. But then again, it then means I have to go and buy butter, but then I'm left with butter in my fridge. What am I going to do with it? It means I've got to buy more bread to use the butter. You can butter things. Or cook things in butter, which is incredibly bad. There are worse things. There are worse things, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Genocide, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly made me choke on my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! I'm glad I didn't have any nuts in my mouth. I would have choked on mine. Yeah, exactly. Oh. All, this nut, all this nut choking going on. <laughs> <laughs> There's your intro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh dear. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. I am, you know, chewing on nuts while whilst we're talking. It's because I haven't eaten anything yet today. And like I say, it's eight o'clock at night, and I'm uh, hungry. You're nut um, hungry. I am not hungry. You're and thirsty get, for nuts. Yeah, get some nuts. So yeah. Anyway, what do you want to talk about? Um. Well, no. I <laughs> I was just thinking. Um. Uh, you you. I'm sure you remember we, we were talking about um, programs for cats. Oh, yes, yes. And just tying that up with what we've just been talking about, um, I was thinking you could do a program, a cookery program for cats. The cat, cats love their food. They do, yeah. And in particular, certain things. Now, I don't mm. know. This might be lost slightly because they like the smells of them. Yeah. And that's not really going to come across. But 
from a visual point of view and in terms of the sound, you could yeah. have a cat, a, a cat culinary <laughs> program with um, all the all the lovely cat treats that you'd want. Yeah. It was the fish fingers that made me think of this. Okay. <laughs> right. So you could have fish fingers, you could have, um, what else cats like? Um, more fish. I was saying, I really don't know. Mice. Um, uh, mice yeah. fingers. Yeah, that's not going to be very nice, is it? I mean, I wouldn't want to cook it. Milk, cream. Yeah. Um, they do like meat. Yeah. Raw or, um, they do, I don't know, I don't really know what cats eat <clears throat> in terms of meat, whether it's cooked or, or raw or what. It varies. I mean, they'll eat pretty much anything. Well, yeah. Cheese. Cats like cheese? Yeah, I found that cats like cheese. Okay. I, like, I know dogs like cheese. Mm. Um, not sure. Yeah, wasn't sure about cats. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, they don't like onions, though. No. Or most of them don't like onions, I would say. Ah, now, i tell you what I was going to, what I needed to get off my chest. Right. I went to Greg's the other day. Oh, yeah. Uh, and asked for, I think it's a cheese and onion, not pasty, but a, a, a slice. Okay, yeah, cheese and onion bake. So, yeah, slice cheese thing, and yeah. onion slice. Which, I think generally they've usually got more potato and onion in than they've got cheese. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, I suppose in, in order of the cost of the ingredients. Um, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, I went in, and I'm pretty sure I've asked this question before in a Greg's. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, could I have the um, uh, cheese and onion slice? Could I have it heated up, please? Right. As was the way that you would have a cheese and onion slice. Mm -hmm. At all of the times in history and all of the places and what seems really intuitive, I want it warm. Right. And did, did this, happened, do that? this happened to me twice now. And they've said, no, we're not allowed to. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I've never asked Greg's for anything heated up if it comes warm then awesome mm -hmm. uh, if not then i just kind of live with it you know i live with that disappointment but i've never asked them to actually heat anything up for me before mm. seems like uh no I, I think that's a weird thing to ask no that that was a thing oh, okay that was definitely very much a thing and now clearly um health and safety is now dictating that they can't do that. Yeah. It, it will be to do with, um, what, like bacteria in the food. Reheating right? things. Yeah, and reheating food. But cheese? Um, Seriously? Well, yeah, even cheese, onions, and potatoes can get bacteria in them. They're not immune. But yeah, but so, so could anything. Mm. Anything could have bacteria in it. Yeah. How many people have survived <laughs> a heated... Uh, heated up cheese and onion slice before now. I'm going to assume I, I would say, millions. I would say many millions. Mm. I'm going to assume millions of people have, mm. have survived the warm cheese and onion slice. Mm. <laughs> the warm cheese and onion slice capades. And I, I would understand it. Okay, so I suppose one of the big things that they sell is sausage rolls. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think they're particularly nice anyway. Not theirs, anyway. I don't think so. I think you're wrong. Well, let's be clear. For a start, they're going to be cold. And they're not going to be heated up. True. And like I say, if you manage to catch them when they're still warm, they are amazing. I don't want to catch them. I want them to cook it <laughs> to order. If you're going to make baked <laughs> goods, if you're going to make mm. something that's designed to be a warm treat... Mm. And then you got to sit, put it on a, um, in a in a cold area, <laughs> and then sell it. By the time it's stone cold, yeah, that's hardly appetising, is it? 
No, yeah, but some people like that. I remember when I, one of my first jobs, I worked in Morrison's in, in their pie shop. Mm-hmm. Um, and we used to have the same, I used to just multiple times a day, I'd have the same conversation with people. They'd be like, oh, can I have a warm sausage roll? I was like, be like, no, I don't have any warm ones. They're, they're already cooked. They're on the counter. If they were meant to be served to you warm, it would be a heated counter. Mm. Yeah, it is not a heated counter. And they'd all they'd go, bro. Oh, I want a warm one. Well, I'm like, well, if you want to just circle the block for a bit, and once I've sold these and we've got some more cooking, you can come back and you might get a warm one. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but because uh, I also think you want a warm sausage. So you come into Morrison's, you want a warm sausage roll. So this is a supermarket. Um, I can see you've got a trolley, so you're going to go around and do some more shopping anyway. Mm. You've come to the pie shop hoping for a warm sausage roll, but it's going to be cold by the time you get outside. You still have to go to the checkout and pay for it. Yeah. But it's going to be cold by the time you get outside. I can never wrap my head around it. Don't get me wrong. When they're warm, they're really tasty. Yeah. Um, but when they're cold, they're okay. You know, not the worst things in the world. But people want them warm. And the reason why you've ever had people come to you and say, can I have it warm, please, is because mm. they've got experience of going to Greg's in the yep. 80s, 90s, 2000s, when life was better <laughs> and they would get it warmed up for them okay i understand that perhaps reheating pork products mm. isn't the number one thing in the book when it comes yeah. to food hygiene mm. however a cheese and onion slice or better still why don't they not make them all and then when somebody comes in and asks for one, they can make them. But how? But the the, the point of it is that it's fast food. You're going to be able to. I, I, I want it hot. <laughs> You're going to be the one person that walks in and go, "I want a cheese and a slice," but I need you to cook it fresh for me. That'll be twenty minutes. I don't care because I would be one of the millions of people who would simply say, "Could you heat it up for me?" Yeah. And any se- in any sensible <laughs> realm, they would say, yes, of course. Two seconds later, there you go. There's your, there's your hot, um, yeah. there's your there's hot, your warm, um, and, um, whatever it is. Yeah. But like you say, health and safety get in the way. And health I know and I safety can- gets in the way. But the thing is, instead of, instead of me walking out without any pastry goods, thinking, oh, it's bloody health and safety gone mad, I could <laughs> be walking out with a hot, um, a hot bit of cheese pasty thinking to myself I'll be coming there again and I will be telling my friends yeah and what I'll be doing is I'll be going on a podcast and telling people how I really enjoyed <laughs> the service and the yeah. quality of food that I got at Greg's do you know what that's not the story I'm coming out with that isn't the story right now that's no. not the story no However, I do. I might have a solution for you. It does require a bit of manual work, though. If you go to Iceland, you can buy frozen Greg's products and you can cook them yourself. Mm. And I've just remembered that they do this, and I'm now planning that I'm going to go to Iceland tomorrow and buy some sausage rolls so I can cook them myself. The other solution is I buy them cold from Greg's, take them home, them heat microwave. them up, heat them up, eat them, and then every time I eat one, I email Greg's uh, to tell them that I'm still alive. <laughs> Dear Greg's, I bought your cold pasty and I threw it in the microwave when I got home. And I'd just like to report that I am still alive. Hourly reports to follow. <laughs> Dear Greg's, it's three hours later and I'm still alive. <laughs> Please, could you arrange for a microwave to be installed in all of your stores, just in case I walk in there and want a hot sausage roll or well, a hot Betty's cheese still- pasty? Oh, no, I've got a great idea. <laughs> I walk in with a mobile microwave. <laughs> mobile I microwave. I ask for them to heat it up. They say, I'm sorry, we can't. I say, mm. why not? And they say, oh, it's health and safety. And I'll say, okay, I'll just take it as it is. And as they hand it to me, I throw it into my um, microwave, <laughs> which is just under my arm, heat it up right in front of them, and then start to slowly eat it in their face. Yeah. But then comically, you've heated it up too much, and you've, you're now burning the, the roof of your mouth. And you're like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then they look at you and go, told you so. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then I'm sick. Yes. And then I sue them anyway. <laughs> so you're because that's how health and safety floor. works. Yes, absolutely. You're damned yeah. if you do, and you're damned if you don't. Yeah. But you end up barfing all over the floor and you take them to court for selling yeah. your bad product. Because I slipped in the bath. Yes. Yes. In the bath, not the bath. <laughs> <laughs> bath with an F, not bath with a TH. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although I'm sure, I'm pretty sure some Gregs have like a, a little like bars around the edge where you can like sit and eat and drink your coffee if you want. Mm. Some of them have plug sockets in. You could just go take a microwave with you, like you're saying, just plug it on thing, plug it in, throw your, your pasty in there, beep, 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 ding, you're done. Thanks very much. Um, you don't even need a microwave. I've thought about this just whilst you were talking. Mm. What you could do is you just take a toaster. Yeah, and there's little toaster bags that you get. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't get crumbs all, all along the inside yeah, of your toaster. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So you buy it, you first of all complain that it's cold, mm. then you buy it, then you walk over to the table, plug in, da 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 Yeah. There we go. Tapping away on your MacBook Pro because you're some kind of hippie weirdo, <laughs> um, drink, drinking your caramel macchiato, whatever. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, ding, your, to your toaster bag pops up with a nice hot pasty in it. Yeah. Nice. Well, won't they look fools? <laughs> so, won't they look stupid for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what if that would work? Not that like, I mean, I don't own a toaster either, but I wonder if it would work reheating a pasty in a toaster. Of course. Because I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about heat transference inside the pasty. You shove it in a toaster, it's just going to heat up the outside, not the inside. But by the time you've put it through enough times to heat up the inside, the outside is burnt. No, because you use one of those bags. I like the idea of the bag. Okay. I mean, I don't know how good the bags are. Mm -hmm. I've seen them used, but I don't know how good they actually are. To be fair, the, 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 they're not exceptionally thick, these pasties anyway, so no, that's true. It, it would heat up nicely. Yeah. And you don't want the true. cheese too hot, otherwise it will burn your mouth. Yeah. And then you would lost that... that that cool moment when you then, um, when you turn eating your hot pasty and <laughs> winking at them as if to say, <laughs> I've got one over on you. Yeah. I'll win this round. <laughs> 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 yeah. The, the raising of fist saying, I'll get you next time. Yeah. I was thinking it's just that slow eating of the pasty and all your eyes are saying is, I've won this battle and mm. the war. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so I'm actually just researching where my nearest ice club is. Oh, they do. I forgot they do delivery as well. Might order a load of stuff and get it delivered. Who? Iceland. Oh. I ordered. So I, because I was trying, I was being super lazy. I, uh, I did my week, my big shop that I was telling you about earlier. Um, on Tesco's online, I thought, oh, you know what? I'm gonna. It's a lot of shopping. I'm gonna have it delivered. I only have a small cart. It's just easier if they bring it to me. Yeah. Um. So I put all of my, you know, sh shopping in the thing. Went to the checkout. Put in my credit card details. So I got a credit card that I pay for it all on, and then pay it off at the end of the month. Um. And then uh, the day of delivery comes, and my card keeps getting declined. I'm like, well, this isn't right. I've got more than enough credit available on the credit card to. You know, to cover this, um, keeps getting declined. So I, I phone the credit card company. I'm like, "What's going on? My car! I'm getting all these notifications saying that my card has been declined." And they've gone, "Oh yeah, it's because of the uh, the thing called 3D Secure. It's like one of these multi-factor authentication things. Be yeah. a credit card." And I was like, "Okay." I was like, "So how do I get around it?" And they were like, "Well, I can try and run it through for you again." And I went, "But doesn't that mean the 3D Secure thing isn't going to work?" Because I need to be the one to do the 3D secure stuff. Yeah, and they were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's um, yeah, that that's that's how it all work." I was like, "But at the point I put my credit card information into the web page, it doesn't ask for 3D secure because it's not actually doing anything. It's just taking my details." Yeah, because they don't take payment until they are ready to deliver it to you. Right. In, okay. In, in case they have to do um, you know, substitutions or anything like that, so they can then adjust the price accordingly. Yeah. Um, or if something's not available, they can you know reduce money or whatever. So they don't actually take payment at the point you press the checkout button. They take the payment when it's ready to be delivered. And right. I'm like, 
so this is actually no good to me whatsoever because I can't authorize the transaction because I'm not the one putting the transaction through. And they were like, yeah, that's how it works. I was like, so what's the point in that? Mm. <laughs> what's, what's the, I phoned up Tesco then. And I was just like, look, this is what's going on. Um, I don't know what else to do about it because it was the only method of payment I had at the time. I didn't actually have, have any real solid cash at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, what do we do? And they were like, well, that's just the only way it goes. So there's nothing else you can do about it. That, that's just how it works. I'm like, oh, this is a bit shit. I guess I'm going to have to go to the supermarket anyway, aren't I? Yeah, so after all that, I spent about an hour on my iPad putting this nice shopping cart together because it was great. It meant I wasn't walking around the store, so I'm not going to go, oh, and spot something and then go, oh, I'll just pick that up as well. I'm literally yeah, going yeah. by what is written on my list. Yeah. Um, I was like, this is perfect because I know exactly how much it's costing or, you know, give or take a few pence. Mm-hmm. I know exactly how much it's costing uh, and I haven't got anything that I don't actually need. It's just or anything that's on my shopping list, that's what I'm picking up. Yeah. And yeah, and then the whole thing got thrown out the window because of stupid multi factor authentication. Yeah. I had to go to the supermarket anyway and go and do the shopping. At which point I then picked up stuff that I didn't actually need. This this is modern life. You know, stupid stupid credit cards, stupid multi factor they're trying to help with that. They're trying to help. But what yep. they're actually doing is they're ruining the entire experience. Yep. Just like Greg's. Just like Greg's. They're taking something that could have been great, Mm -hmm. ruining it. I think we should start a movement. We Um, should. Make Greg's great again. We'll get hats made and everything. What do you reckon? I I think that's good. (laughs) (laughs) I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, why? Why is this difficult? The point of shopping online is to make your life easier. Yeah. And I know, as I've said many times on the show, there is a Tesco supermarket, large supermarket, five minutes walk from my front door. Mm-hmm. So I shouldn't be lazy and should just go and get it myself. But I was like, the amount that I have to get, I can't really walk home with that. And my car isn't that big. I end up squeezing it all in and things will get broken and damaged. And mm-hmm. I just don't need that hassle in my life. So I mean, I'll get it delivered. What nope. if you were? What if it wasn't that you're lazy? What if it was that it was, you know, you had a disability? Exactly. What if I was disabled and physically couldn't go and do it? Shocking. Shocking. That was The Tuesday Show. Get in touch with us. All the links are in the description. And until next time, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.